creatures will now transform into one mighty warrior! Load up your dual discs and get your game on. Behold, Valkyrian, the Magna Warrior! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters. I summon Swordsman of Landstar! For this list, we're looking at the creatures that are summoned throughout the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime series, basing our choices on just how iconic they are to fans, as well as their overall impact on the show. Mystical Elf! We're also only focusing on the first dual monster series this time around, so sorry, you say. Soka. Number 10, Black Luster Soldier. Bringing forth... <laughs> The Black Luster Soldier! Behold the creature that made all duelists both enthralled and terrified of ritual monsters. Who'd have thought there'd be a way of bringing that kick butt monster out of Yugi's deck? First summoned in Yugi's battle against Mei Valentine, this was a monster that boasts not only incredible attack points, but also one of the slickest designs in the series. Portrayed as a knight of darkness, it only made a couple of appearances throughout the series, but it soon became clear that if Yugi summoned it, then a dragon was about to get slain. Behold! The Supreme! Dragon Master Knight! Harpy's Pet Dragon, the Five-Headed Dragon. Seriously, this thing is probably what dragon-type monsters have nightmares about. <laughs> Number 9, Zork the Dark One. Zork, reduce this land to rubble and envelop Egypt in eternal darkness! It may not actually be a card, and it can't be summoned during a game of dual monsters, but how could we ignore the monster that served as the main antagonist for the explosive Dawn of the Duel arc? Created from the evil in the hearts of humans and the forger of the Millennium items, this beast was so strong he managed to defeat Exodia, the three Egyptian gods, and the Blue-Eyes White Dragon. Now that takes some doing. And yes, he does have a crotch in the shape of a dragon. Number 8, Buster Blader. My expert swordsman has the power to wipe out your revival gem and more than half of your life points. Upon entering the Battle City Tournament, Yugi had managed to fashion himself a new deck that had an impressive collection of monsters. Buster Blader's too powerful to waste on his weak monsters. But I'm sure it'll come in handy when Merrick plays something more powerful. One of the guys on the block was this rather powerful summon that held the handy ability of gain 500 extra attack points for every dragon type monster on the opponent's side or in their graveyard. Now, Buster Blader, swing your mighty sword and slay his dragon! This mighty warrior was a major pain in the backside for Seto Kaiba. In fact, we're pretty sure this card was just made to piss him off specifically. Number seven, Summoned Skull. Go, Summon Skull! Magic Lightning! Going back to the earlier series where Yugi had only just begun his dueling career, he had this fiendish monster handy in order to get out of bleak situations. No, no way! Considering these were the days where you could summon any monster no matter their power level, Summoned Skull managed to land Yugi more than one victory. Summon Skull, attack! <laughs> It nearly bested Pegasus during Yugi's first duel with him, and had the distinct honor of shutting up that annoying as hell Weevil Underwood by electrocuting his precious insects to dust. Summon Skull! Electrify that harpy! We don't see much of him nowadays, but he certainly made his mark. I'll switch Skull to defense mode. Number six, Jinzo. I'll hardwire into Jinzo, which will immediately boost his attack power by 500 points. We're surprised that Joey managed to actually get as far as he did in the Battle City Tournament, because going up against this monster is definitely a recipe for disaster. Now, my dragon's demolished. This futuristic Frankenstein has the handy or infuriating ability, depending on which side on the battlefield you're on, to negate all trap cards in play. <laughs> As such, it became a powerful tool at Joey's disposal that served him well throughout the remainder of the tournament after he won it. Jinzo proved to be so popular that he came back as an actual villain in the Virtual World arc. Yes! I am Jinzo! And with a monster this powerful as my deck master, you don't stand a chance! Number 5, Exodia the Forbidden One. I can't figure out what to do with these cards. They're just a bunch of... 
cases. We're not sure whether having a monster that actually lets you win the game just by holding five particular cards in your hand is either cheating at its finest or kind of brilliant. He can only be summoned by drawing all five special cards. A feat that to this very day no one has ever accomplished. Making one hell of an introduction during the pilot episode, it secured Yugi's first ever win against Kaiba by obliterating three Blue Eyes White Dragons in a single strike. Exodia, obliterate! Due to its instant win ability, it's understandable why the show would find a way to get rid of him. Say goodbye to Exodia! Number four, Red Eyes Black Dragon. Throw the Red Eyes Black Dragon in attack mode. You can probably pinpoint Joey's prominent rise to being a decent duelist at the time when he managed to acquire this bad boy from the devious Rex Raptor. It may be less powerful than its blue-eyed counterpart, but Red Eyes has won its fair share of duels and secured itself as a monster worth having in your deck. Even when going up against tougher summons, the Dark Dragon has come out on top with its series of alternate forms, ranging from Red Eye's Black Metal Dragon to Black Skull Dragon. Check it out. Number three, the Egyptian Gods. It's Obelisk, Slifer, and the Winged Dragon of Ra. You have rare cards, you have powerful cards, and then you have the three Egyptian Gods. Stop! Call these creatures off right now! The driving force behind the anime's second season, these three legendary beasts are some of the strongest and most badass looking monster summons you'll ever come across. With serious attack points, lethal special abilities, and the nasty habit of giving duelists ancient Egyptian flashbacks, Obelisk the Tormentor, Slifer the Sky Dragon, and Winged Dragon of Ra stand tall as some of the most destructively awesome monsters to ever appear in Yu-Gi-Oh! He just summoned the most powerful cards in the game! Number two, the Dark Magician. Dark Magician, attack! Before Yugi started adding deities to his deck, this spellcaster was the monster he was most famous for summoning on a constant basis to help him win battles. Possessing decent attack points and a memorable design, what's most notable about this shadowy conjurer is his tendency to have a whole flock of alternate forms. From the Dark Sage all the way to the Dark Paladin, Yugi's signature card has a whole plethora of tricks up his sleeve. Dark Paladin attack! We also have to give a mention to his voluptuous assistant, the Dark Magician Girl. Ah uh, yes, the Dark Magician Girl. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hey! This mighty warrior will cut your faceless mage down to size. With the magician of black chaos, I will avenge my fallen friend. Number one, Blue Eyes White Dragon. Did you think your grandfather was the only one to possess a Blue Eyes White Dragon? <laughs> As much as we'd hate to add to Seto Kaiba's monumental ego, we can't deny that he has a great choice of monster cards. And look at the sweet prize I won. Uh, <gasps> Grandpa's most treasured card! Though we'd have to say, making a blue eyes white dragon jet plane might be going a little overboard. You think I've got it all? As one of the most powerful dragon type monsters out there, its high attack points have often spelled doom for Kaiba's enemies. Count yourself lucky if you only have to face one, because if three of these monsters ended up on the field together, then chances are they'll end up fusing into the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. And that is a customer you do not want to mess with. So that's why he didn't play his Blue Eyes at first. He was waiting to merge them all together. <laughs> So, do you agree with our list? No way! Who's your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh monster? Attack his life points directly! With new top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. And now, I'll play Stukat's face down and end my turn.